hello everybody. Uh, my name is Benzer Lukac. I'm here with my colleague Benjamin Heurich. We are from the University of Passau in Germany. And today we're going to talk a little bit about our project, uh, the Road to Open University. And it's a teacher education project that we're going to uh, present to you kind of what we did uh, during the project and our thoughts and um, research ideas behind the project or the connections to open education resources and open science. If you want to follow the presentation, you can um, scan the QR code or you will find the slides in the Connect platform uh, or just put in this link and you get to the presentation. So if you want to scan it, I'll leave it up a little bit. All right. All right. Um, so where is Passau? Um, Passau is at the border. Uh, it's in south of Germany, in Bavaria, and it's at the border to Austria. So we are kind of maybe a little bit isolated when it comes to broader Germany because we're quite uh, far away from, say, the bigger cities. Munich is the next closest big city. So in that sense, every project that uh, we work on, especially at the university, works kind of by its own rules, I guess, also some uh, Bavarian rules, I guess. Um, we'll get to that later as well. So uh, in case you're at a computer later, if you want to open up the presentation, um, if you click on the S button, you get the presentation view uh, where we put in a, little, a couple of more information, a little bit more explanations about some things we talk about. And um, also the navigation with our slides is a bit different, so you can use arrow keys and go to the left and to the right. So if you open up the presentation and you start to go down, that's where our presentation starts and then we go to the next page. Um, and by escape, if you, I don't know if it works on mobile as well, but on a computer, if you click escape, you see the whole presentation, you can navigate to the, to the slides specifically. So what we're going to talk about today are basically two big things or, or give an overview about the, the work we do. Um, one is the structures that we have to work uh, with in teacher education in Germany, then give an overview about the project itself and what kind of role it plays in the university and also how it sort of embeds in the open science uh, framework, I guess. Um, we purposely use the open science recommendation here because uh, in our thinking and in our work, the open science idea, I guess, is the foundation for everything we like to do. So OER is just basically on top of it. Uh, you will see later how OER comes in into our work, but our foundation is basically open science. So the structures, uh, I'm not going to go into detail too much because uh, this is quite um, specific and it, it's also not super interesting to talk about the, I guess, the policy structures and how Germany is set up in, in the federal states and how the funding lines work. Um, we linked a lot of the things here. You can see in the slides that if you click on the various uh, parts, you get to further information about that. I guess the only important thing is that it's embedded in a funding line specifically uh, that deals with quality in teacher education. And also um, it's a federal structure in Germany, so each federal state kind of plays by its own rules, sort of. Um, I guess what's interesting is that we have a lot of uh, student teachers actually at the university, which is quite nice because um, we can, with this type of project, we can kind of push the university towards change in the bigger picture. So the open structures, also I'm going to just mention them briefly. Um, we set up a, an OER policy in the beginning of the project to kind of function as a guiding document for the, the lecturers that we have who um, design various courses and work with students on OER. So that kind of helped us uh, all the way through. 
uh, we started a cooperation with the virtual university in uh, Bavaria. I will come to that later as well to publish OER material. And I guess the main parts are our innovation labs, uh, which will also uh, come up later. And just the entire focus of um, digital literacy and information immediate literacy, which was also kind of the basis of the project. And obviously the way uh, teacher education works uh, at the University uh, of Passau and the way the, the project is embedded is that lecturers uh, should or want to pass on like basic um, ways of working with digital tools to the student teacher. So it's kind of an entire cultural, um, um, I guess, education as well, um, which will make sense later when we get to the to the innovation labs and how we use them. Now I need to give over to Benjamin to talk about the project. Yes, thank you very much. This is now more into our topic, talking about opening up a university. We just saw some maybe rigid, rigid uh, structures and some open structures. And when it comes to opening up a university, which, which seems to be a really big and like really time-consuming project, which it is. Um, I want to focus on something specific, which is cooperation and participation, especially in our project and in teacher education in general. So the graphic on the bottom, which we'll, we see later, maybe modified, will guide us through this content we see here. So we want to establish cooperative structures and that's kind of difficult in Germany. We have seen some of these rigid structures um, in the beginning, but also teacher education in general is always constructed by states in Germany and they're really strictly ruled by maybe slow paced policy decisions and so on. So we wanted to implement new formats of teaching as well learning and interplay of higher education and schools, and that's where cooperation and collaboration comes in. And we think that, especially when we think of teacher education, sometimes only goes one way, which is from university, especially in the first phase, from university to society. So we build teachers, we educate teachers, so they can educate students and other people. And we want to do it so we have maybe do it both ways so we can have some insights from society and we will see later in what structures we can do that. And that comes with some special OER materials we are trying to implement. So we are on the conceptual level with OER materials, which is seminars or lectures, which can both be used in schools and uh, the universities and on the didactical level. So we just try to test some methods and some digital structures we will see later in our innovation labs. So for now, keeping this in mind, university uses science education to do something with society. But of course, as he mentioned, we are using these recommendations for us. Some of you might have seen them already. They, the UNESCO recommendations, they consist out of three main areas. Just skip them for now, skim them for now. We are focusing on, as I said, on the part uh, above, which is about collaborations. And of course, sharing information to society, with society, and back. So our goal is to maybe implement in both phases of teacher education in Germany, which is, um, maybe there's a, there's a third one, which, which comes later, but it's, we both mostly talk about both phases, the first and the second. The first one, is uh, rooted in the university, which is mostly just subjects and scientific knowledge and teacher education inside the university and the institutions, universal institutions. Uh, opening up these structures would mean we have to observe society, of course, because we have to teach future teachers what they have to teach the students. Which I said, the curricula are very strict, so the subjects are always in place, but there are some things in society happening all the time, right? So technolo technological advancements, political decision-making, 
and some societal discrepancies, for example. So we have to implement these in phase one, and opening up this phase would mean we need more eyes and ears to observe society, right? So t talk to us inside this is, uh, the university to uh, what can you do with new technology, for example, or how can we react to new developments or social norms that are changing all the time. Uh, phase two is more practical oriented. They, uh, teachers go to schools and have one or two years practical, uh, practical work in schools. And they come back and uh, share their experience with, uh, with us in the university. So opening up this phase would mean uh, just don't close our university doors and just let them, let them go. They have these uh, state exams and they can go on with their life. They would come back from time to time, share their experiences, and we would invite other social actors and um, social workers, for example. So we use structures inside the university, and we will, we will see them in a second, the didactical innovation labs, where we meet, collaborate, talk, but still we don't have a real method where, how, how we can do that and how we can achieve really the way back from society into university. And that's why we think and we uh, are convinced that it's necessary to find a common ground, and we think that we should use the scientific method not only in the first phase but also in the second phase as a way of collaborate. So participation of society on the basis or the imperative of the scientific method would be a good way to achieve a common ground and to use the data from society to work with the data, to use the experiences from teachers and to work inside the university in these structures we see in a second. And um, why we use this, why we think this method would be the best thing to do. Similar to the SDGs, we think we identified some discrepancies or even colliding values and principles. When you think of the SDGs, maybe there is uh, number eight and number 13, which is economic growth and uh, climate action, basically, which are always colliding, right? You can have it both ways and you have to uh, work it out somehow. And I think we identified some of these here as well, like um, responsibility, respect, and accountability. You can see there, and the quality and integrity, or collaboration. So when we think about involving every stakeholder and the participation, opening up everything, maybe there is a lack of quality in the scientific research, because there are maybe normative, the, the scientific ob objectivity would be diluted by normative principles or opinions or maybe too, too much of, of talking and not researching. So there are some colliding principles. That, that's why we think we should choose one method for everything, build it as a solid base and work on that. So promoting a common understanding of open science on the basis of the scientific method would associate benefits and challenges, which is really uh, the most important thing because in the recommendation, the UNESCO said, we all have to think of different paths to achieve open science, and that's what we do, and we chose the path which is mostly rooted in scientific research. And uh, apart from that, not only have we, do, have, we, have we to choose different paths, but we have to uh, find um, incentives and rewards, right, for our professors, for our lecturers, because our experience is, it's always nice to talk about open science and open principles, but all the professors, they want to have something, right? They want to uh, just, okay, that's my data, that's my research, I understand open science, but I need some incentives for me, for my students, and for my people I work with. So these things combined are, in our, from our perspectives, in the light of university-based teacher education, the things we want to achieve um, on the basis of the UNESCO recommendation. And of course, that's where we show where we do all these things and we have some of our digital uh, didactical innovation labs for you in our presentation. We'll come back to this graphic at the, at the end, but for now we see something has changed already. I, I was talking about Open University on the basis of the theory and method of scientific research. And then we have collaboration 
with society, but after a few pictures of our structures, we can have, that's, that's fine. Uh, we, we can come back to this graphic. All right, now a couple of the practical examples that we had in the project. Um, uh, the Open Work Hub was one of the, I guess, uh, collaboration structures that we tried to implement, which kind of goes against like traditional professional development structures in teacher education. It was more of an open space where the goal was to build smaller groups based on topics that were interesting to the lecturers themselves. And uh, we just bring them together sort of with the infrastructure of certain rooms and then we uh, let them work uh, basically by themselves and maybe come back to the room and then create their materials as well. Like I mentioned, the collaboration uh, uh, part, um, especially with the sharing of the material, was also quite interesting in Germany because there, uh, every federal state uh, wants to build its own um, basically repository or any structure. It has to be something that's unique to the federal state itself. So what we did, we didn't want to build anything new as a university. We just said, you know what, let's uh, try to find somebody in Bavaria who works with maybe online uh, education more, and uh, let's collaborate with them. And then we talked to this uh, virtual university Bavaria. Uh, as it happened, they set up an OER repository for their own material, so we started collaborating with them, so our material can be on this repository, which is uh, quite nice, actually. Um, this is one of our uh, innovation uh, rooms. You can maybe click through them by yourself because it's an interactive thing, so you can click around and check what we have. Um, we have three of them, basically. It's a classroom. We have a teacher's lounge as well, or a teacher's room of the future. Um, very innovative. I think most universities uh, have some kind of lab because it's kind of a cool thing to have nowadays. Um, also in the co-working space, which um, promotes even more this open innovation and collaboration idea, because this is not a traditional room that you kind of have to book and, and do something, uh, like do lectures in it or, or seminars in it. It's mostly about meeting up, um, brainstorming, using the computers to create material, and just get together and talk about uh, whatever is on the mind of the lecture. So that's where it kind of finishes uh, with our basically goal is to build on the scientific method and research in these rooms how we can um, try new teaching methods that are digital and innovative. Um, but also, obviously for us, uh, media pedagogy, media didactics is the, also the foundation of everything. And the uh, uh, last few parts we actually mentioned, it's about cooperation and collaboration across the university as well, in teacher education, with schools, and ideally, obviously, with everyone else as well. And uh, openness in practice is that we produce most of our, whatever, seminar concepts and ideas as OER, so it's openly licensed and uh, it can be accessed uh, through various platforms. And now to finish off the... Yeah. Finish on that last note, that last slide, here we see that uh, we have maybe achieved the way back from society, maybe back to the university. When we meet in these kind of structures all together, ch share our experiences, work on the basis of the scientific methods. That means using the data, using the methods, and be really strict with the method and then you invite every time we invite new teachers and new students to share their ideas not only teachers and students we talk about shareholders stakeholders and social actors because we think that maybe it sounds a little paradoxical but to be that strict with the method we can open up what university used to do just in one way and we can go the other way as well and work together on, in the center on the scientific method. And that, because we know we are always a sh little bit short on time, I want to end on this one. We want to go into iteration with you as well, so we have uh, a little board for you. You can visit when you click on this link. You will end up here. We have some questions prepared for you. Just grab a sticky note on the side and please give us some feedback. You can see the Questions over there, questions are welcome now as well. 
but if you have some feedback, any feedback is welcome. We are happy to talk to you, and thank you very much for your attention.